And now, from beyond our dimension, this is the Jeff Mara Podcast. Here's Jeff. My guest is Steve Nowak. Steve was previously my guest, and we talked about his two NDEs, but we didn't get to talk about everything that happened during his NDEs. So he returns today to fill in the blanks of what we didn't get to talk about last time. Steve, thank you so much for joining us today, and welcome. Thank you very much for having me. I'm uh, glad to be back. Uh, It was a pleasure last time. Uh, Hopefully, I get to share a little bit more. I think it would be best if we just do a little review of your NDEs, because there are probably people that are here that weren't here for your first time on the show. So if you could just start briefly with those, and then we'll go into, you know, what's missing. Sure, that sounds good. Well, at four years old, um, I was riding my plastic big wheel, kind of like a tricycle, but very low to the ground. Out of the driveway, I went, a car was coming. I went in between two cars. A car completely ran me over. So I was underneath the car, pinned. The car didn't know she had hit me because I was so small, and she kept going probably about another 30, 40 feet. Uh, This time I lost consciousness. Um, And the next thing I remember is waking up in a room that was square and it was all carpeted around me and it looked like romper room. And I said the same thing the first time and the same thing this time. That's the way it felt. It felt very inviting and warm. And I was leaning on someone and I had my head on them, and there was nothing else around, uh, nothing on me or anything. And my head goes down, and as I open my eyes, I see long, silver, whitish hair, uh, almost luminescent. And then I see the same color bottom of a robe, because my head is down, and I open my eyes. And as I turn, turn to my side to look and see who it is, there's no face, just light, but it's a hooded figure. And now the, this light made me want to lean in closer, made me want to get closer, but it, it was so bright. It was brighter than the sun, but it didn't blind me, not one bit. And so I turned and I asked what happened as I'm sort of being pulled into this being face. And they said, Stephen, put your head down. Everything's going to be all right. And I turned to my side, and I can see what looks like a blueprint, like you have for a building, except it's for all of creation. And it's like built upon by us in agreement to basically co-create reality. And this was kind of what I was seeing was like the core. Um, We spoke a bit more but I didn't remember until later in my life. So the next time you started remembering, that was because of your second NDE? Yeah, it had something to do with it. Um, I was very young and uh, driving very fast, driving my car very fast. So I come around the corner, I'm doing about 75. I flipped the car five and a half times. It starts rolling. Uh, Two people ejected. Nobody had seatbelts on. Um, shattered my elbow, a couple other things. But about a year later, I needed a surgery for that same elbow. And as I was underneath, well, actually not underneath yet, as I was being wheeled in before I was even underneath, um, I was getting very nervous. I wanted to get out of there. Very antsy, filled with anxiety, and just overwhelmed with dread. And it was unexplainable because I'm like, What's the big deal? This is just an elbow surgery. So at the same time, this warm wave came over me like a velvet blanket. And it was safe and peaceful. And I heard the same exact voice I heard when I was four say, Stephen, put your head down. Everything's going to be all right. And at that time, it was like, it was like having a, you know what a light bright is? The old toy? Yeah, or a touch screen. It was like having a touch screen in the center of your stomach. And it was like somebody touched me and I could feel 
spark take off. And then the vision started. Well, I had my surgery, came out, and there's some years between that. What was the catalyst that had you remember all the stuff from your NDE? Um, it was like as soon as I recognized the voice, it like singularized all the energy that was within me. Mm. All my, my emotions, everything just came into the now rather than me being off to the left or the right uh, in other emotions and other illusions that didn't exist. It brought me in line with truth for that moment that I was loved as, as an energy. All right. So we've kind of reviewed it now. What is the new information that we didn't talk about last time? Some of the visions that came in after, uh, it, part of my understanding was it came to me as a walk-in as some sort of deal that I had made, um, during my NDE to leave and have somebody else come in for a certain period of time. And I know that probably doesn't go with some of the walk-in stories you hear now, and some it probably does, but what I came to understand was it was for the evolution of mankind. It was for this time period where the sun is going to start to kick off solar flares. Humans are going to evolve their consciousness, and they're going to be more light beings. Um, and they're going to need guidance doing that. So that was some of the information also that we can do our life review while we are here now in this body, rather than waiting to pass on. And we can do this through ascension, through the divine blueprint that's contained in the blueprint that I saw. We have something like a file contained in records. Some people call it the Akashic record in this field. And we can retrieve this as redemption. Anytime we wish to sort of get rid of our baggage, get rid of our lower self and evolve into a, a better state of being. All right. Let me stop you here. You had a walk in after mm -hmm. your first NDE or after your surgery. From what it was told to me was they were going to come back, and I believe it was the surgery is when it happened. So during the surgery, yeah, they were they were going to return for ascension. How long did the walk-in take over your body for? Days, weeks? I mean, it's still here. It's still part of me. It's it's like a higher self, a higher form. Um, from what I came to understand, and I talked a little bit about this the first time is that they are Elohim here to help people evolve into a sovereign being of love um, themselves uh, and to the Christ consciousness. Mm -hmm. But it, at, for, it started in 2008. I would say that's the point where it was like something landed in the center of my stomach, which I now understand as polarity. You know, it's when you get all that energy in your belly and mm. you don't know what to do with it. Well, this was like that times a thousand. Mm. So there was a process of probably about 10 to 15 years of integrating with a higher self or a higher being. I need to get on the same page with you. What is a walk-in? From what I understand, it is when a soul decides that it no longer wants to remain here, participate under undergoes a painful experience and wants to leave, but it's not their time. Um, from what I understand is you can make deals with these higher beings right now that are coming down to this planet uh, to help it cleanse and heal. So are you saying that you are sharing this body with another being? The container, yeah. I would say the bioelectrical field because there's no way I could do this as a human. There's no way I did it in 2008. There's no way. I don't think any ordinary human could do this. It's just recognizing what's available inside our conscious mm. as a divine source for us to claim, really, as, as power, because we are a power. We are energy generators.
would it be correct to say that you, Steve, are still in control of this body and thoughts? It's just this other being is maybe giving you like downloads or extra information? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, they speak through me quite a bit, obviously. Angels speak through people. Holy Spirit speaks through people. So when, when I speak about this, I'm speaking about the Holy Spirit in a bioelectrical man. That's my connection to God. That's the physics part for me. The photons of light that are entering my field. So I lost the question there. What was the question again? I always thought that a walk-in would be like the original person would just like disappear, become unconscious, and this other spirit would just take over the body and it would be a completely new person. But I could be completely wrong. It sounds like from what's happening to you, you're still there, but you're sharing it with someone else that's maybe giving you downloads or something. You could say that probably if you knew me, like only now, mm-hmm. but if you knew me then and knew me now, you, you would be like, no way. Mm-hmm. If you were to ask people I went to high school with or friends or family, I would, everything changed for me um, pretty much overnight. My job, uh, lost family uh, because... I was hearing, I was hearing people's thoughts. I was touching things, and I knew how to take them apart, put them back together. Um, I could feel these waves of energy, and this was pretty harsh. Suddenly, um, so what I what, what I've come to understand was it was the Elohim, and they're working through us, and we can make ourselves a pure vessel, a pure container, by offering our, our lower selves, our subconscious to heal and working within that and allowing them to restore the function of our nervous system. The Elohim are angels. Yeah, or God or Holy Spirit. They're pretty much the same thing, Mm. but they're separate. Mm. It's very hard to describe. What is it like when you run into people that knew the old you? Some people expect the old me, like right away, and so it really surprises them that not much bothers me that I'm so calm and I'm so peaceful and I'm very grounded now because I'm in that energy. But some people are surprised. Some people get super curious and all magnetized me and they just start sharing everything. They ultimately open up. Mm -hmm. Um, And some people just snub you because they think you're arrogant. But, but, But it's that you're confident in what you've witnessed. Had I not done this work on hundreds of people, seen thousands of visions and experienced thousands of things, I wouldn't believe it myself. Mm. So some people do see me and, and they know me that if I'm believing in this and doing this, that it's real because they knew me before. Now, just before your surgery, you were going through anxiety and dread mm-hmm. and then you had that experience. Do you think at that point you wanted to leave and that's why the walk-in came or the walk-in kind of forced it itself on you? From my understanding from three separate dreams that three separate people told me and then my own dream to confirm it was that I had made a deal Hmm. for them to assume function on earth when they were coming to earth to expand consciousness. Was that a pre-birth contract or at the time? From what I understand, it was when I had my accent. It had something to do with the amount of pain that I was going to have. And that was pretty much the most I heard of that. That was the accident. So, and I was... take everything. Yeah, I take everything with a grain of salt. So mm-hmm. I need like one, two, few things before I even try to believe something. Mm-hmm. That... But um, my sudden rapid change in personality and, and all that mm-hmm. job, uh, I didn't even feel like me. Uh, you could say there was another consciousness animating my vehicle that led me to churches, that led me to the places that I should be going to, rather than deg- degrading myself with earthly things. This was the first accident as a child from the pain is when you made that contract? Yeah, it was during that near-death experience. Everything we talked about, uh, that's when they revealed the evolution of mankind, ascension, um, and as I locked this bit by bit, when that voice returned and all these visions came in and everything started to really 
be shown to me in a 360 picture. Um, there was just so many things that I didn't know how I knew, and I thought I was crazy. Man. I thought for sure I was going to end up on the seventh floor, no doubt about it. What else did we not cover during the last video? I can share the part about our zero-point energy. Like, right. This is a, a, a new thing that people are, are just discovering. They're trying to harness the zero-point energy, which is the energy contained in between the waves of photons. So it's a perfect ground state. So if you can achieve this zero point energy, you can perfectly ground yourself. You eliminate all the interference, all the misfires going on in your subconscious. This is kind of what they don't want people to know for this time period, because there's so many plugins into our nervous system creating our reality right now. That's within our minds. And then we interact with reality. There's so many things trying to plug in to harvest that energy. A collective darkness, just like there's a collective light. Uh, collective darkness works together in networks, just the same as the light does. And so they revealed that to me as well, how the light is coming onto the earth. Darkness is kind of getting stirred up. And we're going to be in this cleansing for a while. Were you shown any of the future? Quick glimpses, but I can't say they were like uh, anything that would be different that you, than you would see on the news, like destruction, things like that. I did, I did get information about the sun and the change of the sun that's going to be big. Um, and we see it kind of popping up now. There were times when years ago I got information about food shortages. And we're here now. And I still think it's a good idea to at least have a few weeks of dry food and water. Yeah, back to the zero point field. So this goes back to our divine blueprint, our file that's contained in the field. And we can claim this. We can say, I activate my zero point energy. I claim my divine blueprint. And you can say this through Jesus Christ, through Holy Spirit. But the point is to say it consistently to begin to learn this bioelectric relationship with your nervous system and the field, because this is what's going to lift you out of the lower patterns, out of the trauma, out of all the things that's going to cloud our system. And so they taught me to sort of learn this like a system, like you would a, any type of system you want to keep peaceful, you know, you protect that system. What else can you tell us that we didn't cover last time? So another thing that I've learned last time from my ND was that we were all the universe experiencing itself independently as different aspects. So as I learned this, I started to learn that however I treated life, whether it was people that I was grumpy with, things like that, that's how I was treating the same energy that I was seeking alignment with. So now if I'm seeking alignment with God, alignment with love, now I'm not treating God that way, even though there's just because there's a filter in that way. So they also gave me a larger perspective that I was a character in a play. I was playing my own play and I had all these people with me and that they could play their characters and I could suggest edits, but I can't play their character for them. So I still have to accept them to move about in this cosmic play sort of where these characters play out and my only job was to learn how to become love as a state of being in any given moment no matter what was happening around mm. that doesn't go for like uh righteous anger or whatnot when you need to act people know when they need to act but i mean when my system is disturbed and how to reset our system mm. back into peace and love and alignment where do you see yourself in the future? In the future after, you mean now? Yeah, let's say in the next five to 10 years. What do you see yourself doing? In the next five to 10 years, hopefully uh, I have my own retreat with some land where people of all races, religion, sexual orientation can come and meet the love of God 
through this gift that I just happened to get by going through what I experienced and they can feel what I feel and feel safe and loved no matter who they are. Um, they can come to understand that one God as all things and everything else is just an interaction. I'm going to pause. Uh, so hopefully a retreat. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully a retreat. Do you think that you'll still have the walk in with you? Oh yeah. I think it's here till it's, it's solidified. So slowly as I was guided through this drop inside me and then the polarity began. So began my soul retrieval. So what that is, is we go through the world and we part out a piece of energy to experience reality. And this was part of what I saw during my NDE was a singular version of ourselves as love and all around us 360 was a screen with memories and experiences, but they were actually data. They were just data that contained frequencies and emotions. Well, when you say data, that's starting to sound like the matrix to me. It's like all code and what we're here is like all computer code. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's all it is. It's frequency um, that are, uh, you know, love's a frequency, anger's a frequency, hate. That's why we see those experience, uh, experiments with plants, uh, things like that. Um, but a, a lot was revealed on the interaction of the energy behind everything for me because I had left a marker there. Whatever occurred, there was a marker left there, an imprint, and I had to figure out how to get back to it. You know, I lived a lot of my young life reckless, and it seems like I was subconsciously trying to get back there. But I figured out how to through ascension and, and now through the field, which is available to everybody. When do you think the planet will go through ascension? Well, it's big now. It's happening now. Not everybody's going to go through it because they're not going to want to be accountable for the shadow because you're really trying to move frequencies and energy. And when those two energies don't match, so a lot of people aren't going to go through it. But I would say, I'm thinking probably over the next 50 years, to 100 years, we should be through most of the bad stuff, um, which is self-cleansing. It's that we don't take care and responsibility for our shadow inside us because any energy we create inside us, as its law of nature wants to be placed in the material world. So if we don't deal with it, we're going to build up, build up, and we're going to take it out on each other. And this is what the collective darkness wants. This is how it takes us down from within. Do you ever see humans completely evolving into light beings? And if so, sure, I, how long do you think that would take? I'm thinking that's in the 50 to 100 years because mm. we're already being pushed to do it now. Um, through the sun, uh, solar flares, the CMEs. Um, every year during the Lent. I forget it's Lent every year. And... All of a sudden, I'm like, I can feel the energy stirring in me. Don't feel like eating. I'm pushed to fast. So this, to me, is an energetic thing. Um, and it's a connection to the sun. Not only that, the sun who is the Christ. It's so... That morning star. It's so interesting that you mentioned solar flares because... I had belonged to this certain Facebook group and one, they have a post that says a solar storm is happening right now. And two, there's another post in here about, I guess it's ratings of solar storms. It's G1 through G5. So it's fascinating yeah. that, to see that in Facebook and now you're talking about it. Yeah, and it's photons of light that are coming from the plasma that's inside the sun basically interacting with our electrical field and our photon. Mm. Um, it's going to expand human consciousness, uh, help us evolve as a species. You know, those of us that want to evolve. Uh, but it's up to us to not judge others and guide them and, and kind of show them the way instead of judging how they're doing it. Can you tell us more about what you were shown with the singularity? So the singularity, we come into our bodies as a singular expression of love. Over time, 
we part out our energy to experience lower realms, lower energy, to create with earth realms, because we come from much higher than earth. Um, but in the middle, there is a singularity. So from the singularity, you cast out all your images on the screen. And in between these images and these memories and these feelings, you have space. So what, what we're undergoing now is the ascension or the singularity back to the law of one as well. So it's coming back into itself. People are remembering what truth is. They're coming back into singularity with truth. And what they really are is being um, not imprisoned within their own nervous system. Is it correct to say that a singularity is basically a black hole? I believe that's a little different, but mm. I think you're correct. Yes, it's a vacuum state. Yeah, I, I think you're you're correct on that, but I think there might be another terminology for the black hole. Um, but yeah, it's a vacuum state. It's a, a pure ground state. You have no other connections. You are totally unattached. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Which is very healing for the subconscious because now you're unifying the field. You're releasing all control. So we exist in a vacuum space outside of this realm. Is that what you're saying? I don't know that we exist as that vacuum space. Um, I think we exist as love. If love is a vacuum space for density, then I would say yeah. But I think it does have some... Uh, what do we say? Uh, I don't want to say mass, but it has, yeah, mass without matter, I believe. What is your opinion on people who are awakening? Well, my understanding is that people are awakening as, as we are beings of energy. They're awakening and they're sort of evolving. They're starting to vibrate faster. They're finding their zero point energy, which is really that hidden manna from God. But they're all coming online together. And when I say online, it's almost like one mind, a collective consciousness or an oracle. Um, but as they awaken, they're, they're tuning in with their frequency to sort of the same thing in the field. So I see people align with the same mission along the same frequency to share the same experiences. And then you see some people over here, some people over here, and nobody's better than anybody else on the journey. It's just that they're all learning different things. We're all learning here how to feel from our soul and from our system rather than with just the senses of our body. What do you That's think, what, what we're awakening. What do you think are the best ways to raise our frequency? For me, it's every single morning. It's the same routine, but it's consistency. Consistency is key. Um, if you can get out into nature, great. What I do each morning, I ask the Holy Spirit to enter my consciousness. Say, Holy Spirit, please enter my consciousness. I thank you. I love you. And as I'm saying, I thank you. I love you. I allow myself to feel the interactions of my words between myself and the field. This is telling me my state of being. It's telling me the energy in my container. It's telling me a, a whole bunch of things. So I say, I ask the Holy Spirit to enter my consciousness, which just means pure spirit. I ask the Christ, the law of one, or the singularity to expand within me. You can also say zero point energy. So I ask the zero point energy to expand within me. I thank you. I love you. I ask God to surround me. And you're now connecting three points of energy. And you're really looking at your nervous system and your bioelectrical system as connecting to higher wavelengths, higher pathways now. So each morning I ask the Holy Spirit to enter my consciousness. I ask the Christ to expand within me. I ask God to surround me. And I do breath work. I do five to ten minutes of breathing. I thank 
all my loved ones on the other side when I wake up, all my guides, all my galactic guides. Um, I connect myself as much to the field as I can. And I try to establish this pathway going through my system. All right. I activate my zero point energy, very powerful, but it's only as powerful as much, as much as you put behind it. Do you think that the reason that people experience NDEs differently is because they're vibrating on a different frequency? I do think that. And I think they experience different things because they're passing through their own consciousness. Like, especially the darker ones, I think they pass through their subconscious quite a bit because they have a large buildup of it. I'm not saying the entity can't manifest, manifest through that certain scenario. But yeah, I, I think it's, it's dependent on the frequency of what we experience. Like, I don't know why I experienced what I did, but all I can say is that it had to be for a reason. Mm. I learned, I also learned that that, that feeling of giving to others and then you feel good after that grace. Oh, I did this for this person and I didn't ask for anything. I learned to chase that feeling. I learned that feeling was God and that was my comfort. And that helped me discern with my heart all the energies that were on the outside of the world. The more I filled myself with this energy, it became a mirror for what was going on on the outside. No matter what somebody's words said, I knew that energy. This voice that you heard during your NDE and around your elbow surgery, have you heard the voice again after that? I have, yeah. I heard it uh, one other time, except it spoke quite a few more words. Um, I was driving home. I was beating myself up about uh, work and just the kind of person I thought I was at the time. Um, Very dark night of the soul. And... I hear this voice come in and at the time I'm also awakened to spirits and shadows. So it was a lot to really process. So I hear this voice come in. It starts telling me all these wonderful things about myself, all these people that I touched that I never even knew started telling me it it started to transfer that feeling to me. So I started to now feel it. And as it's telling me, you're so beautiful, you're this and that, and it's very hard to remember what it said, but the one thing I do remember was I asked, who are you? And it said, I am. And I said, who are you? And it said, I am, nothing else. And then I said, who are you? And then it said, I am. And then right at that moment, it was like somebody energetically jerked tears out of me. I just cried like a reflex and cried and cried and the hardest I ever cried to him for this day is that day. And I, as this was happening, I could feel all these feelings from the past and I could recognize they were all from the past being replayed in reverse. And I was feeling them at the same time, but separately. And I didn't understand how. So that occurred for like 15 minutes and it was a pretty good cleansing, a pretty good data dump, put it that way, because it's, now I view it similar to being a hard drive. Uh, we store subconscious data, and we can also program our subconscious, and we can also clear that data. Do you think this being that has been speaking to you is your guardian angel, and is it the same being as your walk-in or someone separate? I think the voice is separate. For me, it feels separate. It's very warm. It's very... Oh my gosh, I just ate a pound of grandma's cookies and I can't move and I don't want to move. I'm under this warm electric blanket as opposed to um, just this energetic being that I work with um, being very stern but loving. You understand? As far as what I or if people want to evolve as beings, should choose a spiritual food, things like that. So they're very different. Do you think this being is a member of your soul group or a guide or a guardian angel? I believe 
it's a type of Elohim, a type of angel. Um, but there are also times where I can remember and have vision of and I know it's me, and I'm standing with beings similar to what I saw in my NDE, except they aren't clothed, and we're at a console, and this console is very translucent. And it's almost like we're leaping to where we need to go. Hmm. So for me to put like a definition of Earth on it, all I can say is it's a frequency and it's an energy, and it's a field of higher function that I built and solidified in its integrity by not letting anybody take it. You know, I became love and I won't let anybody take it. It doesn't matter who it is. It's interesting that you mentioned a console because that sounds something mechanical. Is it possible that that was some type of UFO experience or if not, have you had any other UFO experiences? Yeah, that's, that's very interesting. You asked that because I asked myself, uh, was that a UFO experience? Was that where you were? And I'm pretty certain that's where I was as a being of energy before we entered. But I have had other UFO experiences. The very first one was um, eating a bowl of Cheerio, walking up the stairs in my, my room, and all of a sudden I hear this voice, and it starts saying, Stephen, you have important stuff to do, and you're a, what did they say? A member of the Divine Council. We're from the Galactic Federation. They said a few other things, and I was like, yeah, 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 okay. Mm. You know, at this time, I'm not very convinced. Okay, so they left. I looked up some of the information they had given me, and I was like, wow, lo and behold, there's that, there's that. And I don't read too much into those and take those as truth as what they put in those websites. But I'm like, that's interesting. It's there. So next time they came back again, and there was, I was a little more serious. And uh, I kind of said, you know, I don't know why you're here. I'm willing to work with you. Um, they said they were kind of part of my soul tribe. And since then, I've seen them show up in sessions in my third eye where I take people and I can see them laying on a slab and we're working on them and I can see almost what looks like a star gate and I can see beings enter through this gate and they start working on them. Hmm. Um, so that's my experience with them uh, showing up and sometimes also just assisting without being asked. What do you think the common denominator is between aliens and angels or energy beings? I think it's our identification. Like, could I say in an Ar in Arcturian's an angel? I don't know if it has achieved the correct frequency, or I don't know if it can, or I don't know if you know an angel would be just a being of light, whereas an Arcturian would be both. You know what I mean? So there's so many questions still left for myself. Um, I do have another one other UFO dream experience because I have quite quite a few lucid dreams. Mm -hmm. Well, before we go to that, have you ever considered yourself to be a star seed? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That I, uh, I but I feel like I quantum leaped here mm -hmm. to deconstruct and free people, free people's nervous system from the matrix, from all the plugins, make them a sovereign system to where they control the polarity, not anything else. Interesting that you mentioned the word the matrix because we were talking about code earlier. Yeah. Do you, you think know, that you form your reality through your nervous system? So. Mm. All right. Well, what was your other UFO experience? Jeez, that was a dream. I I, I asked them like, take me up in the the spacecraft tonight. I need some healing. So sure enough, I'm viewing myself laying on a table. I'm wearing like a white jumpsuit, except a bottle, and I have no facial hair. And there's one other person like me there. And then the Arcturians were there. And it was a very sanitary place. It was very white. How you would kind of imagine it. Um, and then they kind of imparted to me so that we can connect to that system through the field. And we can heal ourselves that way by speaking to the field. 
and then noticing the nervous system response. All right, Steve. Well, if people want to contact you after this podcast, are you up for it? And if so, how should they reach you? Absolutely, yeah. Um, anybody wants to uh, reach me for healing, you can reach me at trinityhealing.com. Mm-hmm. That's Trinity he- actually, sorry, trinityhealingreiki.com. So the other one's my Facebook page, mm-hmm. trinityhealingreiki.com. And also on Facebook at Trinity Healing. Um, my phone number is there. You can send me a text, send me an email. Uh, that would be Trinity Healing at my.com. So um, is I the, do remote healing, uh, in person. Sorry. I was going to uh, ask what kind of services you provide. Uh, remote healing from any distance. Doesn't matter. I have clients in the Netherlands, all over the world. Um, I do in-person visits. I do Reiki classes. I also teach how to connect to the quantum field, the zero point field. Um, Also spiritual coaching by the hour if if somebody needs spiritual coaching or lift me me up, pick me up. All right. Well, before we finish up, can you leave us with one last positive message? Don't identify with what your subconscious mind tells you. It's going to be consistently being triggered by the outside world. You're going to feel this rise rise in your subconscious, in your nervous system. Allow that to pass, allow it to dissipate, and then choose a higher frequency. Get yourself out of these lower patterns of thinking, of pain, of depression. Uh, Allow yourself to feel light and expand. Give yourself that worthiness that God sees in you because you don't see yourself how everybody sees you around you. You really don't. Thank you for that message, Steve. And thank you for coming back and being my guest again today. I really appreciate you. I wish you the best. Thank you, sir. Thanks for watching the Jeff Mara podcast. I really appreciate you. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. And if you do, there are loyalty badges and other perks depending on your level of membership. All you need to do is click the join button underneath the video to find out more. Thank you for your support.